I am a proud wife and mom of two school-aged kids. I'm worried about their future and the future of children in every corner of our nation. And that's why I invited you into our home tonight. That was Alabama Senator Katie Britt, a lawyer and former chief of staff to her Senate predecessor, talking of her qualifications in last week's Republican response to the president's State of the Union address. Or, as her Alabama colleague Tommy Tuberville put it, she was picked as a housewife, not just as a senator. Joining me now is Molly Jongfast, Vanity Fair special correspondent and MSNBC contributor, and Olivia Troy, former senior advisor to Vice President Mike Pence and executive director of the gun safety group 97%. Thank you both for being here. Olivia, I do want to go to you first, because you are a conservative. I don't know if you're still in the party, but you came from the Republican Party initially. What did you make of it? Because a lot of Republicans hated it. A lot of Republicans gave it very bad reviews. What did you make of her presentation? I was horrified. I mean, I sat there in shock. First of all, I mean, you couldn't uh, ignore the kitchen setting. And I kept thinking, this is how they're going to court women. They already have a problem with women in the Republican Party. And you choose to put a female senator in the kitchen to deliver probably the most important speech she's giving of her career to date, right? And so I thought it was ridiculous. I also thought it was a slap in the face to conservative women. I mean, I just thought it was, they made a mockery out of her, that they chose this rising star, as she's been called in the GOP. She was well-respected. And instead, this thing was a ridiculously breezy, whatever the heck that was in her tone <laughs> and the way she kind of spoke through it, while she wore a cross, but yet her shirt, her shirt yeah. was unbuttoned. I mean... It was it was tragic on so many ways and and so insulting. Honestly, Joy, I just sat there yeah. in disbelief. It, it, there was so much about it as I was watching it, uh, Molly. It, it was giving you know Serena Joy Green blouse. It was giving very dramatic, and also just the fact that she actually was one of the people who negotiated the very conservative immigration bill that got tanked. She and Langford worked on that together. She actually has an accomplishment she could have talked about. She didn't. Um, but what she did show us, I think, and I would love for you to explain this a little bit, because you're, you're, you know what the youngins are, are doing out there on the socials. To me, she was giving the trad wife trend, which I'm not sure if people are familiar with it, but if you could explain what that is, because that, to me, is what she was trying to give. Well, so this is the idea that you being, it's housewifery in this this current century. It's the idea that you're a mother and that you do things, but it, it's sort of exaggerated. Like you do things like you grind your own flour and you make your own bread and you homeschool your kids. And you, I mean, it's very kind of exaggerated. And the idea here is to push women into the kitchen, right? And what I think is so interesting about watching her was that you really saw Policy-wise, it's very hard to defend a lot of this stuff, right? Like, you've got Republicans, yeah. you know, abortion. You've got women who are, you know, having miscarriages being sent to parking lots to wait until they're sick enough to get treatment. You have, you know, states trying to ban IUDs and the morning after pill and saying they're going to come after birth control. So it's very hard as a woman to defend these policies. And so you yeah. find her, such, you know, telling a sex trafficking story about something that happened in Mexico during the Bush administration. Well, and her beliefs on abortion means that if that same story happened today, she would expect if that victim got pregnant, she would expect them to give birth. And she gave that horrible mm -hmm. story. And I wanted to yell through the TV, yes, ma'am. That's why people want to have a rape and incest exception, exception at minimum. Because if a 12-year-old had that happen to them, Katie Britt would say, you got to have the baby. Um, let, let me, mm -hmm. let me uh, play one more thing. Because there's another person, Olivia, who's doing this game, too, of trying to attract women in weird ways. Here's Nancy Mace defending her support for Donald Trump to George Stephanopoulos. You're trying to shame me this morning. I'm just asking And I find you it offensive, and this is why women won't come forward. Women won't come forward because they're defamed by those who perpetrate rape. Donald they Trump are judged and they're shamed, and you're trying to shame me this morning. I'm, I'm I think not, it's disgusting. I'm not shaming you at all. I, I told you my courageous. story. It took me 25 years to tell my story. I was judged for it. I still get judged for it today. I'm asking you a very simple question. It, and I answered Explain it. You're why, shaming no, me for I'm my not, political I'm, choices. I'm asking you a question about why you endorse someone who's been found liable for rape. Just it was not a question. criminal court. 
Olivia, I mean, Nancy Mace has actually wow. been very brave in talking about being a rape survivor. Mm -hmm. The idea that she is now having to walk the plank for Trump, who has 26 some odd accusers and who is now an adjudicated sexual abuser at minimum, is to me offensive that the Republican Party would even make her walk that plank. And yet she is there she is walking it willingly. Yeah, and even more appalling that she would walk it willingly, like you said. I mean, that is what is so uh, outrageous here, is the fact that it has taken her this long, and she has spoken out with courage on this issue, and then she caves only to support Donald Trump. That's that's the bottom line here. That's why she's walking it back. And so what is the definition here? So is it, you know, you, rape is horrible. It's awful. It should never be condoned, right? I mean we should be standing against it unless it's a candidate that I have to support because I'm in the Republican Party and then mm -hmm. I'm going to walk it back and then I'm going to try to flip the narrative on George Stephanopoulos who's seriously just asking very factual questions <laughs> and trying to understand her reasoning. So explain it to us then, Nancy Meese. Explain it to everyone across the country. Explain it to American women. Explain to us your stand because I don't yeah. understand it. I, I quite frankly, I think it's so infuriating to watch and to double down on it, which is what she's done, right? She That's what she's been yeah. doing on social media. She has been doubling down on the fact and, and trying to spin the tables on George, saying that he was offensive, yeah. that he's shaming her. Well, no, you're, you're shaming actually all women by the fact that you are walking back all of the history of you standing up for Donald yeah. Trump. Molly, she said the word, you're shaming me 22 times. She said offensive 13 times. He was asking a very obvious and logical question. She's trying to now shame her. But I, the last thing I'm going to give you, Molly, she then turned around and shamed E. Jean Carroll and sort of mocked mm -hmm. her response yeah. and her survival. So this is how you're selling women on voting Republican? I don't see it. I don't get it. Yeah. No, I mean, they have, you know, they're in a very tough position, right? Because they have to defend yeah. the misogynistic policies and then they have to defend yeah. the president, you know, the president with all the allegations. Uh, and the candidate yeah, and with all the allegations. Indeed. Molly John Fast, Molly John Fast, Olivia Troy, thank you both very much.